everyone. So about a year ago, I put up a milling machine video about the, the homemade milling machine. And I had so many people ask questions and they're really interested. So I thought I'd take some time and walk you guys around it and then show you how I built it. Now, I, did, I tried to record building it, but I had a lot of problems. I had cameras die on me. I smashed cameras. I had video cards go corrupt. So from what I had, I built the film that you're about to see. Um, but I'll walk you around it now anyway. Let's have a, have a good look. Alright, so here it is. Uh, the motor on the back is a uh, 2400 watt paint sprayer motor and had a big housing around it. I had to cut it off and I had to make my own pulleys here and belt system. Um, I'm not really sure what RPM it does. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me because this isn't a precise machine. I just use it to mill, mill uh, parts, you know, flat or make keyways and it does what I need. Um, I added a, a uh, power feed here for the I think that's the, the Z axis. Uh, it seems to work pretty well. You've got your clutch engage, clutch disengage. That's just a 16 millimeter socket with a hex head here. Engage, disengage, pretty handy. Uh, machinist spice, bought that professional. Table as well, professional. Uh, this motor, the, uh, the lift, I think the Y axis, this motor is actually off uh, a treadmill. It's the rise and fall motor. So when you're on a treadmill and you're on an incline to work harder, this is the motor that does it. It's a good choice because it's a 240 volt motor and I already had forward and reverse polarity so it was easy to hook up. So to start this machine up we turn the safety off, then we can choose to turn the spindle on, stop the spindle, safety stop, so safety stop cuts the X, Y axis and the power feed, it cuts everything. And if it was, it's a fail safe switch. So if it were to, the power was to drop out, it would still be, uh, the machine wouldn't fire back up. So here I can show you here, uh, if we go unlock safety, I turn on the motor feed controller, I put it to fast, I want it to go that way. Log it in. Okay, table's moving. Feed that right up. And get the motor going as well. And I want everything to stop. And it stops dead. Cool. So this is these are all these are all uh, no volt returns, so safety switch here, safety here, safety here, and then that's just a straight up kill switch. And then uh, this is the final one. Wow, loosen these, yeah. You can turn this on, and then if you want to raise or lower the spindle. It wiggles a bit now from all the use, but uh, probably have to move this stabilizing rod here back to here and put an extension down the back so it keeps it all steady. But apart from that, I've got a handle up here as well. This is um, just if you want to manually feed it up or down. I think that's I think that's up. That's down. So I had to make this myself. So there's a shaft. I don't know if you can see it in there. It goes from uh, the top here. This camera's got a really bad lens on it. From the top here, it goes all the way through. It's a 20 mil shaft. It goes down to the bottom, and then we can fit M3 taper tooling in it. So this is your standard uh, Morse 3 taper tooling with your nut hole in the end there to tighten it down. And you've got uh, like a uh, milling fa face mill there, or you've got a fly cutter here. It's going to be rusty. I haven't used it enough. Uh, same thing, thread in the end, and you just clack it up in there, put a bolt from the top down, screw it in, it locks it in place. So I'll see if I can get this out and just show you real quick. So there's a nut on top here you have to undo. Oh, that's on that tight. Undo that. Undo it a bit, just get a hammer and give it a tap. Just undone it a bit, yeah, cool. So there it is there, and you'll just give it a tap. You see the tool just dropped out here. 
I need two hands for this. Hang on a sec. <laughs> you just unscrew that. So there's your bolt. And this is in the way. Get this out of the way. Need it to go that way. I usually have this bolted to the workbench as well, but I had to use my clamps for something else. So. Bolt back in the top. Alright. So that usually sits in there like that. So inside this uh, shaft is the exact M3 taper that fits this guy. Uh, yeah, you, you just, it's a pretty good fit. You um, get your tool, just put it in here and that keeps it in there. And then the bolt goes in the top and just thread it in just so when we're milling it doesn't come out and go everywhere. Tighten it up. I usually have a pair of pliers that go in. Tighten it up. And then that's it. That's ready for machining. It's like that. So if you've got any questions or you want to know anything else, just you know, hit me up, let me know. Um, but yeah, that's my homemade milling machine. I just thought I'd give you a bit of a walk around instead of uh, you know, showing you me putting it together. Okay. This compound slide, when you undo these two bolts, you can turn it this way or this way. So if I turn this compound slide to exactly the same angle as this, and slide it back and forward, the needle should not move. And that means once it doesn't move, I can lock it in and cut that exact angle. I think that's it, I'm there. Lock it in, Eddie. Thunder man, that was close before. Good Thought it almost hit the house, yeah, bang. So this means this, this cross slide here now, it doesn't matter what angle I cut at, if I use the compound slide, it'll always cut at exactly that shape. And now that I have that, I've got to put the part back in the back in the lathe and cut on it.
the whole way through there now. Cool.